Hello, my name is Robert Durso, co-founder of the Golansky Institute. I'd like to speak to you today on some of the causes of pain, fatigue, limitations, and how the Taubman approach addresses and solves these issues. One of the things that we have to deal with are how do we get into these predicaments to begin with. Isolation of the finger from the hand or the forearm are one of the main causes of injuries fatigue limitations. People isolate their fingers when they do exercises such as the following, holding down or depressing five keys at the same time and lifting individual fingers to play notes away from the fingers that are held down. This isolates the finger from the hand of the forearm and gives no opportunity for the hand of the forearm to assist the finger in the two dimensions needed, playing down into a key and moving horizontally across the instrument. We're told from very young age to keep our piano hand curled, the fingers curled. When we curl our fingers, it tightens the fingers. It also tightens the hand. This contributes to a great deal of injuries. The natural hand position, when left to the side and brought up naturally, shows us that we have a naturally curved finger. This is what we need. We don't need a more curved finger, and we certainly don't need a straightened finger. One of the main causes of injury is twisting. Twisting is when the hand veers either to the left or the right of the forearm. One of the main reasons for twisting is avoiding the black key area when we have short fingers on black keys. For instance, the two-part invention of Bach is a very good example of this. I will have to play my fifth finger, which is short on this key. If I make no preparation for that, I will twist in order to get there. What Taubman discovered was we had the capability of moving toward the instrument and away from the instrument. Toward the instrument is in, out is toward the body. When we begin to coordinate the in and out movements, we can avoid the twisting. I can now move into the fifth finger and be right across from the thumb, which is also short on a black key. Stretching is one of the main reasons for injury. We stretch because we don't have much distance between our fingers. We solve stretching by training people to use the finger, hand, and arm in a coordinate way with a rotational movement. Rotational movement can be experienced by putting your forearm in front of your body, turning your hand towards your heart, and then towards the floor. That rotational movement can help us move laterally across the instrument so that we don't have to reach with the finger alone. Forcing. One of the major causes of injury is when people miss time and miss aim the keys. Instead of aiming for the point of sound, which is the escapement, many people are trained to hit as hard as possible into the bottom of the key. The harder you hit into the bottom of the key, the more the piano hits back at you. That's just pure physics. Collapsing is another source of injury. Whenever we collapse the wrist, we're breaking the unity of the finger, hand, and arm. The unity of the finger, hand, and arm is crucial to remaining healthy and playing well. I'd like to discuss a basic overview of the Taubman approach. This would be a bird's eye view, realizing that many details would not be able to be discussed here. The first thing that we have to settle is sitting at the instrument. How high one sits, how far one sits. The main premise here is that the finger, hand, and arm, which is our playing unit, has to become level with the surface of the white keys. Once we accomplish that, we can begin to answer the first question of piano playing, which is how do we put a key down well? To put a key down well, the finger, hand, and forearm have to be connected. The joints have to be in an alignment that connect all three parts. I lift it as if a drawbridge and practice what we call drops on each finger. This gives support to the finger and creates the connected, unified feeling that we need for healthy playing. 
Once we're able to do that, we begin to train people with the rotational movements. As said before, the rotation can be experienced by putting your arm in front of the body, turning your hand toward your heart and toward the floor. We create that movement finger to finger. This gives support, gives speed, and avoids any kind of stretching or reaching. We train it in the descending direction first. Then we train it in the ascending direction. And as you can see, I'm actually doing the next set of motions, which are the in and out motions. The finger, hand, and arm can move towards the fall board, which is in, and towards our body, which is out. To avoid playing for extended periods of time in the black key area, we need to incorporate the finger, hand, and arm in the in and out movements. We begin to do that in a scale by coming out to four, out to three, into two, into one, out to three, into two, into one. On the way up, we're coming out to two, an out direction of three, which then leads us back into the thumb, and out to two, out to three, into four, into five. Once we can do the in and out movements, we can show how to cross over and under. We use the rotational motion to cross the finger, hand, and arm over the thumb and back to the next finger. We use it also to cross under, turning to the right and back to the left for the thumb. All of these can be applied to arpeggios also. Once we have a basic coordination like this, we begin to go into a piece of music like a Mozart, Haydn Sonata, Concerto, and we begin to apply these motions of rotation in and out to scalar passages. So we might take the beginning of the B flat Mozart Sonata, to apply these motions to the beginning of the movement. Once we go through the entire movement and apply the rotation and the in and out, the finger, hand, and arm, the playing unit is ready to incorporate another set of motions, the shaping motions. The shaping motions are the up and down and curvilinear motions of the finger, hand, and arm. These motions put all the other motions together into a unified whole. This is also what enables people to go into speed. So when we add shaping motion, the person feels they have an access to speed in a whole new way. They feel the comfort of it, they feel the articulation of it, the ease of it, and the clarity of it. So the only thing I've done is I've added the shaping motions to the other motions, the underlying motions. This basically gives a healthy technique that is transferable to other repertoire. When people continue in the process, they learn to do other things in the technique, such as grouping, how to put hands together in an organized way, really how to address any concern that they might have in any passage that arises. Some people will even go as far as to want to become a teacher of this, and the Glansky Institute has a training program to produce teachers.